Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here from Saturday Night Stage and today we're going to do a browse through of Nip Mode February 2020 which I received in the post yesterday. I've had some time to go through it and I have some thoughts um, to share. So let's get started. So Nip Mode always uses the black and white motif which is part of their logo. It's pretty cool and they've got some bright floral uh, pastel colors and it says that they've got 21 patterns in this issue which is pretty cool okay and they show you what's coming up in the issues and they even have page numbers which is awesome and then we've got um right off the bat we have a dress which has got um i want to call these kimono style or drop sleeve style uh dress but it, it's one of those that's very easy to sew up because you don't actually have a sleeve seam you just have the sleeve grown on and it sort of just drapes so this sort of uh, style would do really well with a drapey fabric and then it's got a pencil silhouette at the bottom which is achieved by having these four darts and two darts at the back and you've got a little bit of a party at the back and you'll be able to see this later on ahead but you've got a zipper up that center back that ends i'd say just below the shoulder blades and then you've just got like a tiny little opening in the back so it's just like a like a little bit of a peak showing just a little bit of skin at the back there and then over here great use of red and yellow this is one of my favorite color combinations we've got a peplum top with what i like to call a deconstructed peplum because you kind of like have you know it's almost like when you're doing a sketch and you go like you know which would be really, really fun. Um, I think that it would be a lot of fun to walk with this, especially if it's like a really softly drapey fabric and this sort of floats around. Fantastic. So it's that drop shoulder again, but we've made it into a long sleeve by adding a sleeve component to it. Pretty cool. And then the skirt is a pencil skirt, which has got bands on the sides. You can't really see it because um, they've styled it with the peplum top that covers the detail, but that's a pencil skirt. And here we've got the back of the dress that I was talking about. You've got your zipper going right up to there, and then you're showing just a teeny tiny little bit of flesh right here, you know, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of cool. And they've made it in a crepe fabric. I know, an excellent, excellent seam matching detail on that, by the way. Well done. Okay. And then we've got um, the mini me pair patterns, which they do in every single issue. So you've got like this really cute and adorable dress, which has, oh, I need to go find out what you call this sort of bust. But it's the same one on a Giselle maxi dress. And I kind of love that. Um, personally, I think that that's a very flattering style. And it's been made with an in inlay in mesh. You know, which mm, I'm not too sure about personally. If I were to make this, I wouldn't do that as part of the dress itself. I would just wear the dress over, layered over something else rather than make it as a part of that. But I could be wrong. But then you've got the kitty version um, of it. Um, yeah, and she's wearing black. There we go. Right, and then we've got some feel-good fashion coming right up. We've got a really, um, it's sort of like an oversized denim jacket. That's the only way I can think of it, because normally you'd have kind of um, the style, it would end over here with a band, but it goes all the way down. And it's been worn here as a jacket, so I imagine that it's got the ease of a denim jacket. And it looks pretty cool. I like the stripy uh, fabric that they have used um, on it. This is something that I definitely would make. It looks like the sort of thing that you'd be wearing around the house a lot and doing the school run with. And then you've got a really, really long uh, cardigan or slash house coat. It's got a very sporty look to it. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking of those uh, boxing matches right before they go into the, you know, into the ring. And they're sort of trying to hype each other up. I think you could definitely do that with like a satin jersey. It's got an interesting tie at the back. I don't know what that is about, but it's interesting. So there we go. What else have we got? 
Okay, we've also got some uh, trousers over here, which are straight leg or slightly wide leg, and they've got a tie. Hmm. And these are made in Jersey as well. That's very interesting. They certainly look comfortable if they're made in Jersey. They would be very comfortable. And then you've got this really interesting top, right? Which has been made to look like it's over a shirt because at the bottom, you've got shirt fronts with a, you know, that are buttoned up. And as far as I can tell, this doesn't look like it's ornamental. It looks like it's a functioning button placket. So you have to go through all of that extra work. And then it's got um, ties over here and it looks like a sweater. So it's kind of like, at leisure at the top but you know serious business at the bottom i am not sure about the practicality of this so for me personally i'm a low maintenance kind of person and i, I keep on saying that i know it sounds like a broken record but it is so true i am low maintenance right if i'm going to make a sweatshirt i want it to be low maintenance i want it to be something that i can just throw into the washer and then the dryer it comes out and i can wear it but then you add a chambray or a cotton at the bottom that needs to be ironed. You know, it it, it sort of defeats the purpose of easy care for me. So um, I'd have to say that I'd have to pass on this particular style. But I think if you take that off, that's a nice sweater. Okay, and then we've got a jacket, a proper denim jacket this time. And this one sort of goes in at the waist, which might give it a little bit more fit. I quite like this. I like how they've used the contrasting fabrics here. You've got the stripe and then you have the denim at the bottom. So good, I like that. And then you've got these trousers. I feel like we had a similar pair of trousers in the December issue, but I do like how the pockets are slanted. So this is kind of like a classy uh, cargo pants. This is what we used to call them when I was a teenager, we called them cargo pants. And I quite like how they're cuffed at the bottom and they just look really nice with the stilettos. That's a great outfit. And then we've got the uh, dress with Yanis and we're working with Voile. And this is really quite exciting. I like how they've used um, the contrasting ribbons to show up those fun seam lines over there. And this is very much, um, I want to say, not so much flapper style, but sort of like the 20 style way just sort of kind of like goes straight down. But how about that detail? over there you've got kind of like your sweetheart neckline but then you have the bias binding going straight across and you've got sort of like an inbuilt necklace that is quite nice i think and i like the length of that i think that that's a nice length so that's not too bad actually and then we've got a simple jersey skirt with um a really thick waistband and a drawstring and those nice pockets over there very comfortable always useful to have and we've got another jacket. It's a cropped jacket. I think cropped jackets are in fashion or something because Berta also had something similar recently, but it's got a drawstring. Great use of colors. I love this popping colorful colors. And then there's that skirt again. Um, yeah, that's all right. And then you've got um, all of the patterns, the line drawings over here. And one thing that Nip Mode are making sure to point out is that they've changed the ease on their sewing patterns. So it means that whatever I make from this, I'm going to have to make a 12 garment because they've changed. They're saying that they've changed their drafting effectively. So I need to just check and make sure that is going to have the fit that I've come to expect from Nip Mode. So yeah so they're making that and then um we've got the instructions and we've got the pattern sheets and we've got some more instructions over here and i'm just trying to skip the instruction pages for you guys <laughs> so that we can go straight to the meat and bones of the issue right here we go and then we've got um, some hot couture uh, classics and we've got this dress here and it's got a shell collar and the other thing that's really fantastic about this dress is those saddle sleeves. I think they're called saddle sleeves. In knitting, I know for a fact that these are called saddle sleeves, so I'm just going to call them that. But it's almost like it's a grown-on sleeve, and then you've got the bodice coming up, and you could really play 
with the contrasting contrast blocking with this to create something that is really unique and unusual. And I think it's a shame that they didn't do that on here. Usually, Nip Mode is really very good at using contrasting fabric to highlight their unique design details, but they didn't do that on here, which I think is a crying shame because this would have looked fantastic had they used a different colorway for those sleeves. I think instead they chose to focus on this uh, belt, which looks like lips that have been off offset. Um, but yeah, the line drawing is fantastic. The, um... oh, hang on, it's not a belt, is it? Okay, my bad. I just realized it's not actually a belt. It looks like it's part of the actual design itself. Huh, that's interesting. And it looks like that's piping along the waist seam. I gotta say, I liked it better when I thought it was a belt. Um, I don't think I'm a big fan of that, personally. But if we were to take that away, I think that that would be a very beautiful, beautiful make. And then we've got a special on trench coats and they've done a raglan sleeve trench coat. Um, and it's quite interesting that Berda have also got a raglan sleeve trench coat. And this one also has just got the one gun flap. I like the use of colors. You see what I mean? When, when you do the contrasting fabrics, it's a really great way to show what the design looks like. Sure, if you're the person that's buying the magazine and then you're going to go and sew it, you might not want to do this yourself, but at least you can see what the design really looks like. So I think that there are different requirements for uh, publishers of sewing patterns who are selling the sewing patterns uh, versus, say, for somebody who's just sewing the patterns. And I think that if you are trying to sell your patterns, you need to try and show all of the design elements to your customers so that they can really see um, what's fun about your particular designs. So, and I just, I love this. I love how they've used this contrasting fabrics on here. Okay, so we've got some more uh, variations showing us some close up pictures of the raglan sleeve trench coat. And here it is in one color, it's in a bright orange color. And it looks fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And here it's been made in kind of like um, a crepe into a dress. So they've called this the trench coat dress. And again, it looks really, really nice. And I love this yellow piping that they've used to emphasize that uh, raglan sleeve. This is beautiful. This is the sort of thing that I would love to absolutely make. And it's up there on my to make list. And I would make this in a crepe. Can you imagine this in a drapey crepe? That would be beautiful. And then we've got a simple skirt, jersey skirt, A-line style, and it's elasticated waist. And these, oh, I think everybody needs to have a jersey skirt with an elasticated waist because it's just so comfortable for those days that you don't really feel like, you know, you just want to be comfortable more than anything else. So that's fantastic there. And we've got this jacket. Now, I really like the line drawing on this jacket. It looks like it's quite fitted at the waist, but I'm not getting that impression from the picture. And, you know, this, I feel like Nip Mode has let us down a little bit in terms of the fabric that they chose to use for this particular jacket. The line drawing is outstanding. It looks the business. But then when I see this, this kind of looks like a, it looks like a fleecy fabric. It doesn't even seem to hold its structure really, really well. And they've gone with white and I can't really see those seams as well. So I was just a bit like, I, I'm, I'm not too sure. And I'm not getting the impression of whether this is fitted at the waist, despite what the line drawing seems to say. And again, the pictures don't show us whether this is as fitted as the line drawing seems to indicate. So if I were to make this, I'd definitely be making a 12 to check the fit, especially given that they've changed the drafting as well. So yeah, so I wasn't too happy about that, but never mind. And then we've got a shirt dress that has got sheared uh, sleeve cuffs, which I think is pretty cool. I'm quite curious how they do the shearing, actually. I'll check out the instructions later. But again, you're getting to see 
um, the dress in so many different fabrics so you've got a really good idea of what this might look like and then you've got it without that ruffle collar and it's really nice i love that red and black animal print i think that that is fabulous i also like this chain print one um and this one is long and it's also got uh, the sleeve has got like some shearing going up rather than around the cuff itself it's i think that is is quite a nice dress i can see this being popular okay and so this is what we have with uh, nip mode so I didn't think that this is the best um, that I've seen of nip mode. I've definitely seen better. Um, but again, you know, nip mode has the benefit that every single pattern is available in their full size range, although they have changed their drafting. So I don't know yet what the drafting is now. So I have to make a couple of twirls before I can fully comment on what the drafting is. I tried to look at the sizing table and it doesn't seem like there's a distinct difference in the sizing table. They're just saying that the dresses don't come out quite as big. So it will be interesting um, to see that, but definitely love the trench dress. Would love to make that trench dress um, in a beautiful crepe fabric. And I will report to you guys back how I get on with the new sizing. Now it's your turn. Please let me know what you like from this issue. Are you going to be making anything from this issue? I would love to know in the comments box down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for new sewing related content twice a week. And I hope that you found this video useful and fun and entertaining. And if you did, do give it a big thumbs up down below. And until I see you next time, guys, happy sewing. Bye.